everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This movie has been on my most anticipated list for this year ever since it was officially announced. Being the 11th entry into the DCEU, I've been so excited to review this movie so this is Kia's reviews and this is my review of The Suicide Squad. That said, the walking to Boudon is gonna have to stay out of sight. I wear disguise. Oh, you're going to wear a disguise. See? Hey, he's learning Spanish. And what kind of these guys? Fake mustache. Oh. Yeah, fake mustache isn't gonna cut it, mate. You still look exactly like yourself. Worst fake mustache I've ever seen. Not to be confused with Warner Brothers' mess of a movie with 2016's Suicide Squad, James Gunn takes over from David Ayer with respect to deliver a Suicide Squad film based on the original comic series from the late 80s and early 90s. What intrigues me the most about this iteration of Task Force X is that the majority of these characters are basically nobodies, and from the get-go, it becomes apparent just how little the audience knows about this huge cast of DC's B-list characters. This may not be a direct sequel that picks up where the first Suicide Squad movie left off, but I personally see this as a sequel. In the Suicide Squad comics, every new mission calls for a new iteration of Task Force X, hence why some characters from the first movie are returning, such as Captain Boomerang and Rick Flagg, but other characters such as Deadshot and Killer Croc aren't in the new team. Due to the chemistry among the characters in the first film, carrying over into this story, I consider this to be a sequel. Is, is this thing a dog? A, a dog? Yes. What, what kind, kind of dog do you think it is, mate? I don't know, I'm not familiar with all the breeds. I'm gonna go with Afghan Hound. She's with us in Afghan Hound, buddy, thumbs. Oh my god, is it a werewolf? I wanted to meet a werewolf forever. Yo, they shot me into a werewolf? Right. Yo, let me out, I do not a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's not a werewolf, okay? He's a weasel, he's harmless. I mean, he's not harmless, he's killed. 27 children. The stakes and tension of this movie are really pronounced throughout the entire film. Don't get too attached is what James Gunn has been saying since the beginning of promoting this movie, and by using characters that no one really knows all that well, it makes them utterly expendable. There is so much death throughout the runtime that you feel like any of the characters could die at any point. How often do you feel the stakes in a comic book film? Not usually. This made the movie so much more effective for its audience. Sure, the Suicide Squad is inherently violent and incredibly crude, but it's so beautifully made. So much so that it doesn't feel like a typical comic book film. It doesn't feel like anything DC has made before, and it doesn't feel like anything that Marvel has made before. To get a fresh movie that delivers almost everything so well, it's truly not a movie to pass on while it plays in cinemas. It's clear that Gunn did what he wanted to do with the film, and for Warner Brothers to finally not interfere with the process of making it, that's probably why this has become one of the most unique comic book films of all time. I had high expectations for the Suicide Squad going in, but I didn't ever imagine that it would exceed them in any way, shape or form. I really adored every single second of this movie. I enjoyed myself as much as I possibly could and gave myself the experience of watching this on the big screen. Gunn seamlessly blends together heart, violence, comedy and drama, unlike some of the later MCU properties where the seeming need for comedy undercuts some potentially emotional sequences. James Gunn allowed the emotional scenes to play out. You can be enthralled in the film sometimes over the top brutality, and that adds to the fun of it, but to get a properly well-written, dramatic comic book film, it erases all kinds of ties to any sort of comic book film done in the past. This movie also has really brilliant visual effects. It felt so realistic and grounded in its own little way, but still felt like it was part of a bigger universe. It ends up making for an enticing visual experience. I think it's trying to get out. What? Sorrow, the... <laughs> Oh. 
there are so many characters in this film, and while the first Suicide Squad movie had a half hour montage to introduce these B-grade villains, this film jumps straight into giving each person room to shine. Every single member of the Suicide Squad is arcs of development, and really made the audience root for them and truly feel for them. Given the popularity she has accrued as the character, this is Margot Robbie's third portrayal of Harley Quinn. I felt like I did when I watched Birds of Prey last year as I didn't recognise Margot playing Harley, but instead found myself believing that I was watching a real Harley Quinn on screen. She is portrayed so masterfully and along with the rest of the squad, she finally has her moments where you can sympathise with her. Previously described as DC's silliest villain, David Desmalchian's stunning performance as Polka Dot Man completely flips that statement on its head and made him another character that I really liked investing myself into. The trailers don't do him justice, but that's what resulted in him being so interesting and surprising to watch. It's a performance that really comes from a place of pain and personal struggle, but he never weighs the film down. I can't praise him enough because he gives everything he has to the role. He did a wonderful job. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. I thought you were the crazy one. I am. Another character I didn't expect to enjoy so much was Peacemaker, portrayed by John Cena. Typically, John Cena is associated with cheap laugh comedies that never seem to last in anyone's memory. However, this is the first time that I've truly invested in a character he's played that isn't completely based on comedy. His obvious passion for playing Peacemaker is shown so perfectly throughout this film that it really makes me excited for his show coming out next January. Without a doubt, King Shark may be my new favourite character in the DCEU besides Batman and Harley Quinn. I could not hold in my laughter whenever he was on screen. Sylvester Stallone delivered a hilariously enjoyable take on King Shark. Another character that took me by surprise was Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flagg. I didn't overly really love Flagg in the previous film as much as I love Kinnaman himself, but the character has grown into such a natural leader for Task Force X that it made him more likeable and heaps more fun to watch. You're supposed to be decisive. And I've decided that you should eat a big bag of dicks. If this whole beach was completely covered in dicks, and somebody said I'd eat every dick until the beach was clean for liberty, I would say no problem. Why would someone put penises all over the beach? Who knows why madmen do what they do? Newcomer to the Hollywood film industry is Daniela Melchior, who plays Ratcatcher 2. She is the sweetest, friendliest character in this movie and holds a lot of the heart during the film's runtime. Although she may not constantly be in it, Ratcatcher 2 is a very interesting character and I adored every moment with her on screen. She made me feel like a rat was cute for heaven's sake. Idris Elba at first glance may feel like he's replacing Will Smith's dead shot from the first film, but Elba is playing a completely different character called Bloodsport. Along with Ratcatcher 2, Bloodsport surprisingly holds a lot of the audience's emotions in his hands. We all know that Idris Elba is a fantastic actor, but to see his performance in this, I don't think he's topped it in any other role from his career so far. He captures you in a way that makes the first Suicide Squad film feel like a heartless joke. Viola Davis' as Amanda Waller was truly one of the best parts of the first Suicide Squad film. Now that James Gunn has been allowed to deliver a movie with no restrictions, Viola's ruthlessness and her fearlessness in this role make it known to everybody that Amanda Waller is not a woman to mess around with. Everyone in this cast is phenomenal. To James Gunn and everyone in this cast, thank you for such a brilliant movie. I loved it all. You gotta be kidding me. You're gonna risk the entire mission for a mental defective dress as a court jester. This is coming from a guy that wears a toilet seat on his head. We don't leave one of our own behind. Enter through the third floor and then down to the cellar where they usually keep their detainees. Hopefully Harley's still alive. It's not a toilet seat, it's a beacon of freedom! The Suicide Squad feels like you're watching a graphic novel on the big screen at times, but it also feels like a properly made movie that delivers on all fronts. Every scene in this movie was necessary towards plot development or character development, and that's why I find it extremely hard to even nitpick at this movie. I honestly think that this is a perfect comic book film. Every second of it has you hooked. Do not stream this movie. Do not pirate this movie. Don't even think about passing on this movie. Please go to your local cinema and see this because it deserves to be seen on a big screen and it proves to be something unique and really special. I'm giving The Suicide Squad a 10 out of 10. Thank you all so much for watching. Have you seen The Suicide Squad yet? Let me know below. As always, be sure to have a look at my previous reviews of the first Suicide Squad and Black Widow. This has been Kia's Reviews, signing off for now. Thank <laughs> you.
Don't forget to like, follow, and obey.